Yeah, but News 2's Colby Thielen spoke with a doctor at MUSC who says he's not sure there was a definitive cause because foodborne illness is often hard to identify. And Colby, millions of people get one of these illnesses every year. Brad, the CDC estimates nearly 47.8 million will get food poisoning, which is a catch-all term. There are really two types, viral and bacterial. While modern testing can find out if that was in fact from your food, it can often be difficult to know which product or how it became contaminated. Before you order that burger medium or medium rare, consider this. The CDC estimates somewhere between 40 and 50 percent of all norovirus is related to uh, food intake related to food handler uh, contamination. Dr. Scott Curry says cooking to the right temperature is the only way to stop a virus or bacteria from making you violently ill. You can assume that any raw chicken in your refrigerator, any raw beef products may or may not have salmonella, shigatoxin producing E. coli, all these things that have been in the news. Uncooked foods like salads are often responsible and different illnesses may affect you at different times. Staph aureus could be four to six hours after you eat whereas E. coli could be a week, listeria up to a month, making it sometimes challenging for the CDC to identify the culprit. Do you remember what you ate yesterday? Do you remember what you ate three days ago? Do you remember what you ate last week? I mean, those are questions the CDC goes out and asks people, but you know, there's a lot of imperfect recall. Which is why Dr. Curry says the jury may still be out on whether romaine caused the recent outbreak. Some of these people were salad eaters every day, had different kinds of salads. So ultimately, I think only 55% of that outbreak, people knew they had romaine. Uh, others just sort of remember they had leafy greens. But before you go clean out your fridge, Dr. Curry says by the time you know there's an outbreak, it's typically under control. We cause a lot of panic and a lot of throwing out of food, but usually the implicated foods are long gone by the time we identify these things. Yeah, I'm not taking any chances. I'll, oh, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, you know, spend the 250 to get some new lettuce. You know? right. There's a chance. I'm just throwing it out anyways. Right. But we were talking about you know, the difference in hamburgers and steaks and why you can eat a rare steak versus you know, a medium rare, or medium hamburger. And it's because of the way that they, they grind it. So if it's because there's human interaction with it in the grinding process there's something on the outside of that carcass that's going to get ground into the so center. So you can do it, you're meat. just taking your chances. Right. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, if you like to play roulette, that's that's up to you. It's it, not recommended. <laughs> yeah, not recommended. Mm -mm, not recommended. Not at sure. all. All right. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I don't think I want to take that chance. Thank you, Colby. Stay with us. We're coming right back. You're watching.